Ride to Happiness is one of only two mock rides extreme spinning coasters in the world, as of when this video is being made, is located at Plopsaland de Pan in North Belgium. It opened in 2021 and right away it started to get a reputation. People are riding this thing saying, it's insane. That's one of the best rides in the world. You gotta come out here and experience this. Even people who had experienced the other Mock Rides Extreme Spinning Coaster, Time Traveler at Silver Dollar City, were saying that this feels completely different. And so a sense of intrigue starts to build around this ride. Like, what is this gonna be like? And in the summer of 2022, I got the chance to experience this for myself. And let me just say, Ride to Happiness is sensory overload. If you haven't already, I highly recommend you go and watch my first ride reaction to this thing because that will tell you all you need to know about this ride experience. This ride floored me in just about every single way. It delivered on the thrills, the theming, that out of control sensation, airtime, inversions, just about everything that takes to make a good roller coaster. And so all that hype you hear around this thing, believe it. If you're a diehard roller coaster fan, this needs to be at the top of your bucket list. So what I'm gonna be doing in this review is walking through the entire ride experience. I'm gonna do my best to tell you what you can expect, but at the same time, nothing can truly prepare you for what to expect because every single time you ride Ride to Happiness, it will be a different experience. I got about a dozen rides in on this thing because I couldn't get enough of it. And every time I sat in a different seat, every time there was a different amount of people in the car, the cars were weighted different, so it spun different directions. When you take an element forwards or backwards, sideways, whatever it may be, you get a different sensation. There's so much going on here that it takes a lot to process what just happened to you. And to understand why Ride to Happiness is like this, you first should have an understanding of how this ride functions. So the Mock Rides Extreme Spinning Coaster was introduced in 2018 with Time Traveler at Silver Dollar City. And the whole idea with it is that we hadn't really seen these large scale thrill rides that had rotating vehicles that were sending you through inversions and over launches. And so Mock came out with this incredible technology, but Silver Dollar City, being a family thrill park, said we don't want to have that crazy, like out of control teacup like spinning. So they worked with Mach to develop this giant magnet that is underneath each of the four cars that dampens your spin. So you will still get that awesome rotation that you love, but it won't be going out of control. So then fast forward to 2021, Ride to Happiness opens at Plopsa Land Depan. It has these same cars, same exact train setup as Time Traveler, but with two differences. One, onboard audio, which I'm gonna talk about later, and two, that magnet is turned off. And for that reason, I say that this ride might not be for everyone. If you get motion sickness or dizzy like pretty easily, this might be a ride you sit out on. You know, I'll tell you, I'm not a big fan of like crazy spinning flat rides. Like teacups are just not my thing, but I don't mind spinning coasters at all. So this ride totally worked for me. And from what I've heard, it works for Plopsaland's guests as well. Cause it's been very well received and not too many people get sick on ride to happiness, which is a huge plus. But also if you've been to Plopsaland, you know that that park is definitely geared more more towards families and this is a very thrilling ride experience and so as a result the attraction doesn't get as long of a line as maybe it could so I wonder if it's a bit too extreme for some people that maybe it's just not pulling in the numbers that they're hoping for but everyone I've talked to that's written it just thinks it's absolutely incredible so let's talk about what makes ride to happiness so great we'll start with the plaza when you're entering the area and then work our way through the different elements so first the area around ride to happiness is very peaceful Lots of lush greenery. It's totally a vibe, like it feels otherworldly. I really like the color palette they chose. You'll see lots of bronze in the plaza as well as the queue. Everything is very steampunk. And the reason for that is because Ride to Happiness has a very unique theme. They're tapping into a local EDM festival called Tomorrowland. It's actually pretty famous around the world, but it takes place in Belgium. If you've ever looked to see what some of these stages look like, suddenly this theme makes a lot more sense. You can see how they've really taken inspiration from them because everything is just so futuristic. You'll see lots of pipes, almost like you're underground, some cool blueprints and designs, this disembodied head of a talking woman. She almost reminds me of like an AI, like guiding you through this whole experience. She's saying stuff like live today, love tomorrow, whatever that means, but super sick. When you get up to the station, each Ride to Happiness train holds 16 riders. For this, I truly would recommend riding it as many times as possible. So sit in a variety of seats here. 
I mean, like obviously the front and back cars are gonna be the best, but there really is not a bad seat on this thing. And what's so cool is that because of the way this thing rotates, just because you're seated in the very front row, like facing the track when you're departing, does not mean that you'll be facing the track the whole time. You could be facing backwards going out of the station and then one element in, now you're facing forwards for like a good portion of the time. It truly is something else. That's why I say it's so rewritable. So let's dive into these different moments. So first, when you come out of the station, you go into this epic JoJo roll. And this is so weird. In the front, you really stall out more. You're getting this crazy hang time. You're just dangling upside down. But in the back, you go through it pretty fast. You actually kind of whip through it and then you come to a stop at your first launch. At this point, something that you'll have noticed is that the onboard audio has kicked in and this really adds to the experience. This music throughout the ride is so good. And probably the reason that it's so good is because it was created by legendary composer Hans Zimmer. He made it for the Tomorrowland Festival and this is an excerpt from it. It fits with the layout so well. I actually had an interesting experience where one time I rode Ride to Happiness without the onboard audio and it was a little weird. It didn't feel right. Luckily at the time I did it, I was only in one row. It worked every other time, which was great. It's just this really epic track. It is kind of interesting that it's an EDM festival and they didn't choose to go with EDM music, but I'm not mad at all. I loved this. So after that Jojo roll, you're sitting there for a couple seconds. You're probably still gonna be slightly rotating just as you're dying down for that momentum. And then your launch kicks. And this is actually really powerful because what happens is you start to accept accelerate gradually and then partway down the launch track there's this whip where all of the cars just suddenly flip to the side and you start spinning rapidly it is crazy and it totally catches you off guard like i don't even know how this happens i'm not sure what they did that would cause each of these vehicles to just whip so suddenly but it makes this launch so memorable really catches you off guard and then you rise up into this raised section kind of a prolonged top hat we actually did a whole interview with the lead designer from ride to happiness it's a great video. I highly recommend that you check it out. But he talks about some of his inspiration when he was creating the layout. And he said that he wanted to recreate Time Traveler's first drop, which is out of the station because they had terrain to work with. And here in Belgium, it's flat ground. So to create that first drop, they had it rise up into this top section. You get crazy ejector airtime going over the top. There's this slight outer bank as you go to the side. And then you just get pulled down this first drop. And this is so steep and it is wild, especially if you're in the back row. You get yanked so hard. And depending on which way you're facing, it's a completely different experience. I've done that drop forwards, backwards, sideways, or some combination of the three because you might start facing backwards and then you end facing forwards. It's unbelievable and each element is like that. Following that drop, you have a banana roll. This is the first banana roll we've seen on a spinning coaster and it is very disorienting. Honestly, most of these elements are very disorienting, especially the first time that you ride it. You're gonna have no idea what is going on and that's what makes this such an insane ride experience. The more you ride it, yeah, you do get a better feel for it, but it still has that randomization to it. I mean, like one time we had no one sitting behind us and so the vehicle was extremely off balance. And so we were spinning like crazy during the end section of this ride because we just like hit a point where the vehicle just could not stop sending us around. I'd never experienced anything like it. This vertical loop is very cool. This is not the first time we've seen a vertical loop on a spinning coaster. I know this is something that is also on Time Traveler. I do prefer this one because I think it's a bit more disorienting. Right after you enter this very large corkscrew, this was one of my favorite elements on the ride, especially when you take it sideways because it feels like you're doing a backflip. It is so bizarre. And really, there's no bad elements on Ride to Happiness. Each moment hits, has great forces, the pacing feels right. I could go on and on about just how well designed this ride is. I also like this part because visually it's very cool because it's located partially over water. Essentially, this whole front half has water right below you. This coaster also goes over another ride in the park. So you could literally be sitting on a boat and then look up and see Ride to Happiness going all around you, which is pretty cool. Following that corkscrew, there's this twisted airtime hill. You rise up and then get thrown to the left. You hit a great moment of airtime at that peak. And then when you're coming out of that, you have like a second to regain your composure, but it's only before you hit your second launch. And this is really great. So this is a rolling launch because obviously you don't come to a stop right before it, which is something that is different from Time Traveler. So it really keeps with that pace that you're going at and there's an airtime hill in between. So it's insane because you're building up even more speed while getting ejected out of your seat. And you know, in the past with some other mock roller coasters, I've said that their launches feel kind of forceless. These do not. These are awesome 
launches. Absolutely no complaints from my end. And I truly do think that a good reason for that is because you're rotating. It does nothing but enhance your experience. Part of me has thought about what this layout would be like if you didn't have rotating vehicles. Like, would this coaster be anywhere near as good if you weren't spinning? And I really do believe the answer is no. Like, it's a great layout, don't get me wrong. But I love how that rotation disorients your senses, keeps you guessing. It's one of those things that you get off and you're like, now that is a roller coaster. One of those moments in particular comes straight after that second launch. I don't even know how to describe this element because I had never experienced anything remotely close to it. It was by far the most disorienting moment of Ride to Happiness. When we talked to the lead designer, he referred to it as a double inverting dive loop. In a way, it kind of reminded me of the flying snake dive on Storm Runner at Hershey Park. But considering that ride does not have rotating seats, it does not feel the same at all. That means the only place in the world that you can experience this sensation is on Ride to Happiness. Remember that corkscrew that I was talking about earlier in the ride that I loved how it felt like you're doing a backflip? This feels like you're doing two backflips or front flips, depending on which way you're facing. So following that element, you entered yet another great airtime spot. This is another really powerful moment because you rise up and then when you hit the apex, you twist to the left. So you're getting ejected at the top and then whipped to the side. And from here, you're staying fairly low to the ground. You go through this almost 90 degree bank, like right over these tall grasses. And then you end out your experience with two crazy ejector airtime hills, and that's what sends you into the brakes. There's so much airtime on this ride, and it's airtime like you've never experienced before. But it isn't until you hit the brakes when you can like take that breather and just fathom what just happened to you. And that's what I love about this ride. It really does feel like a different roller coaster every single time. That's crazy. Do you know how many roller coasters you can say that about? Not many. So that's why I loved that it didn't have a very long line when we went, because all I wanted to do at that park was just ride this thing over and over again. But I really just hope that this is so successful for Mach and that we get a lot more of these out there. Because you think this is crazy? The last big piece of information that the designer said in his interview video with us, originally he thought the ride happiness was the limit of what the human body can withstand of a ride like this. But now with the reception that it's got, let's see if we can push it even further. And that gets me excited about the future because this really is a world-class roller coaster and I think so many parks would benefit from something like this. So for Ride to Happiness's final score, of course I'm giving it a 10 out of 10. Listen guys, I know this ride is not for everyone, but as someone who just loved this experience, I really do believe this is the best roller coaster in Europe. In fact, I don't even think it was close for me. I thought that this was the clear winner. And I would not blame anyone for having this as their number one ride in the world. I've never ridden another roller coaster like the Ride to Happiness. Not even Time Traveler compares. I did not have like any complaints about this ride. Is it the smoothest? I mean, not necessarily. It still has a little bit of that mock vibration to it, but it's not bad. Like in no way did it take away from the ride experience like it does on other non-spinning mock roller coasters. There's just so much going on here that you have so much else to focus on. Honestly, my biggest complaint with this thing is the merchandise. I loved it so much, it was just really expensive. I understand why they have to jack up the prices because they're sharing the profits with Tomorrowland, but like, man, $45 for a t-shirt, that's pretty steep. But somehow I still bought it. This ride just like fundamentally changed for me what I thought roller coasters can and can't do. I'd done plenty of crazy spinning coasters before, but nothing like this. I cannot recommend it enough. So let me know down in the comments below if you've experienced this ride, if it indeed brought you happiness, because I know it did for me. If you're new to the channel, I encourage you to take a look at some of the other coaster reviews we've done from rides all across the world. We have a playlist organized in alphabetical order by the coaster's name. So check out that playlist, see if there's something in there that interests you, and stay tuned for more here at Coaster Studios, and I'll see you next time.